Okay, good evening everyone again. Um, welcome to this new SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation webinar, Computational Flow Dynamics Analysis Inside SOLIDWORKS. I'm Alessandro Bellini, I'm the Euromed Territory Technical Manager. Euromed uh, is uh, the territory that means uh, uh, Italy, Turkey, Balkans and Israel. And I'm also the Simulation Specialist for the same territory. So, um, welcome again. Uh, the first thing I would like to, to point out is that uh, the webinar will be recorded and you will find a, a link uh, in some days. Also, you will be able to see the recording on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, let's say, from some, some days. Okay, first of all, um, how to use the webinar, the GoToWebinar. Uh, in the right panel, uh, you can input, uh, you can uh, insert your questions. Uh, uh, I suggest you to do so um, when, as soon as possible, so I can minimize, the, the, let's say, the waiting at the end of the webinar. Uh, also, you will find uh, in the PDF uh, the panel, uh, so you can download them uh, uh, from the GoToWebinar panel. So, okay, let's get started. So, with the agenda for the next one hour, um, I will be, uh, I, I will introduce uh, you flow simulation, the challenges for those of you who have uh, already uh, seen my webinars, I will be, uh, let's say, uh, I will show you some of the capabilities of flow simulation and then I would like to jump straight forward to the technical demonstration. Uh, I have uh, uh, a lot of examples to show you in, uh, in, with different capabilities, different uh, business, uh, different markets, let's say. So I would like to, to, to go right to the point. In the end, uh, uh, there will be uh, the question and answer as usual. Okay, so uh, let's say that uh, the first point, uh, of course, is to addressing uh, companies' challenges. So, flow simulation is uh, one of the tools that you can use to improve the company processes and uh, uh, especially the time to market, to decrease the time to market and to decrease costs related to the process, to the design process. And, of course, reduce errors. Uh, in this case, I would like to um, point out uh, the process uh, in, in which the best uh, um, to use simu SOLIDWORKS simulation and flow simulation. So, um, I pointed out uh, uh, as a design tool, uh, you, you should use simulation uh, as early as possible, as quick as possible in the, in the design phase. Uh, in the design process, so, if you have an issue, immediately after the concept phase, uh, you can identify it with simulation, with flow simulation or the other SOLIDWORKS simulation products. And there is a, a close loop, a very close loop, very quick loop to address, to uh, evaluate design scenarios. And also you can uh, uh, define optimization strategies. So it's the best use to, to use it as soon as possible. So, for the benefits, uh, I think it's quite intuitive to have a lower cost uh, uh, because of the re reduction of prototypes. Uh, you have more time to find an optimal solution or to improve the quality of your products. And, of course, you are uh, uh, quicker to go to the market. So, uh, this means also uh, more uh, time to study new products, new strategies. Okay, uh, this is the first survey I would like you to answer. Please uh, answer me if you are using physical prototyping uh, for uh, your products, for uh, performing uh, tests of your product. Okay. Okay, some seconds.
please answer uh, okay we are at 50 percent okay so the question is uh, if you are using physical prototypes for evaluating your uh, uh, product's performance okay so I would like also to share the results uh, and this is, is in line of uh, is in line uh, about um, what I've uh, discovered uh, with uh, the other webinars or with my visits so basically 43% uh, of you are not using physical prototypes so that it means uh, uh, for example external consult consultancies or uh, hand calculation or experience or something else okay so let's go on another survey I would like to know if you are uh, already using virtual simulation software like uh, of course SOLIDWORKS simulation and flow or if you are using other software or you are not using softwares okay please answer some other seconds <coughs> Okay, so also I'd like to uh, share this result and uh, again this is uh, uh, almost in line uh, uh, from what uh, I've seen in, uh, in, in Balkans and uh, in, uh, outside Italy uh, so 55% of you are not using any virtual simulation software so again uh, you are relying on prototypes or external consultancies or uh, and calculation and so on experience of course and so on okay so let's go on let's talk about flow simulation because it, this is the main topic of this webinar so um, I would like to present you seven technologies that are uh, uh, inside the software that right now uh, make uh, makes uh, uh, make sorry the software uh, let's say um, the most uh, integrated uh, software for uh, for a concurrent uh, CFD in the market. So what does it mean? Uh, main benefits: no coming in and out uh, of the CAD package because you are in SolidWorks and uh, it's integrated. So it's just a matter of a click to identify the, um, the domain, the so-called fluid domain, and to start uh, uh, designing the project of the analysis. Full associativity with the 3D design, uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, if you are changing something inside the model, uh, inside SOLIDWORKS model, immediately this is uh, uh, identified, it, it's uh, automatically rebuilt in, in inside the um, flow simulation analysis so uh, you are saving a lot of times there is no again no exporting importing and redoing some uh, some of the setup uh, the uh, navier stokes equation are fully resolved and the the, the math and the uh, let's say uh, all the features are completely uh, verified uh, for example with nafem's benchmark um, in the panel you can find also a PDF related to this um, automatic meshing automatic meshing means that uh, you don't need to prepare the solid of the domain you don't need to prepare something tricky or uh, complex to mesh the fluid or the solid region it's automatically done by the software of course automatically means also flexibility because you can switch off the automatic setting and uh, you can go for the manual of course if you have experience or when you have the experience also another important point important benefit is the uh, what if and goal optimization uh, analysis that uh, uh, I would like to show you later with uh, the real examples automatic convergence control I will talk uh, also about that uh, it's uh, very important because uh, it gives you gives you stability and uh, uh, let's say um, reliability of the uh, of the results 
and of course the uh, automatic uh, of course for me of course uh, la, the, lam the automatic laminar to turbulent modeling so you don't have to choose uh, you don't need to choose uh, uh, if the, flu the fluid is going to be laminar or turbulent uh, it's automatically checked and done by the software uh, let's see some application very quickly and then I would like to jump uh, to the real uh, uh, demonstration uh, so for example extrusion process optimization jet pump dimensioning, filter efficiency, pump efficiency, the determination of the fan curves, and so on. For a heat transfer point of view, uh, we will see also something about electronic cooling, heat exchanging, um, injection molding cooling, uh, uh, solar towers, solar heating, so all the stuff that is related to conjugated heat transfer, so a, a transfer of thermal power from a fluid uh, to a solid and vice versa. Uh, flow fields, of course, we, hand, we can do um, external analysis, so like in, uh, uh, let's say, in uh, aerospace uh, or automotive applications. So, for example, uh, aerodynamic testing of a structure in the wind or uh, automotive engine, in engine cylinders uh, and so on. The mixing processes, of course, are, uh, can be analyzed in, inside flow simulation, so like cleansing processes, co-extrusion of the rubber, spray nozzles, air conditioning, we will see also something about air, air, condition, air conditioning. And, of course, uh, the final, uh, uh, let's say, <clears throat> uh, the final results are also be able uh, uh, to be used for, from a uh, force point of view. For example, if I have uh, a wind-loaded uh, uh, table, wind-loaded wind structure, I would like also to see not only inside flow, but also inside simulation with finite element analysis, uh, what will we be, uh, let's say, the, the final stress on the structure due to the wind. So this is possible uh, with, the, uh, let's say, the co-simulation uh, uh, between uh, flow simulation and simulation. Uh, of course, we can uh, uh, have results in terms of torque, uh, uh, forces, uh, and so on. I would like also to point out uh, one of the most important features of the last release. It's uh, the 2015 release, but also it's improved in, uh, in this version. Uh, it's the rotating mesh. The rotating mesh, uh, um, it's a new approach. Uh, uh, like the name implies, uh, to rotate literally the mesh inside the domain and uh, it leads uh, to more accuracy uh, in terms of uh, in comparison to the old approach. You, you can now address more type of analysis, so mixer with the radial inputs, for, for example, or asymmetric models uh, and so on. And more, more features also in the transient analysis. So, for example, you can see when, uh, uh, when it's moving the, the rotating region uh, and you can perform a time-dependent analysis. So you can see, for example, the starting of a turbine or you can see the, the slowing down of a turbine and so on. So it leads also to more realistic results and animation. Okay, let's, uh, let's switch to SOLIDWORKS so we can uh, see it better. So, for the first example, I have here an um, exhaust recirculation system. So, it's uh, a device to mix up uh, the air and the uh, exhaust gas. So, uh, in this case, you can see the interface um, inside SOLIDWORKS. This is SOLIDWORKS. Those are configuration of SOLIDWORKS. I will uh, switch to them later. And here is a, a, an analysis. So, for example, from boundary conditions point of view, we can have an inlet of air, so in this surface is, is defined, you can see here. So we have a 0 0.05 kilogram per second of air, you can see we are mixing air and exhaust gas, so it's very simple to check it. In the, the other uh, input surface there is uh, uh, on the contrary, 
100% of exhaust gas and here there is the environment pressure so it's the outlet uh, towards the environment okay so also we can uh, uh, we are able to define goals goals are uh, useful for the software to identify like like sensors to identify which are the most important uh, results that we we like um, so let's see also from uh, results point of view of course uh, the results are already uh, calculated here uh, they are uh, they have taken uh, uh, 15 20 minutes uh, more or less so for example I can see a cut plot a cut plot means I'm cutting the domain to identify where I want uh, to see the results the plot and of course uh, I can see for example let's uh, switch here the velocity for, for example we can see the pressure it's just a matter of clicking or you can see here for, for example the volume fraction or the mass fraction of the exhaust gas so you can see here really the mixing of the gas so for example uh, also I can uh, drag the plane uh, and move it very intuitive or let's switch it off we can have uh, other uh, results like the surface plot the surface plot means that we are seeing the plot on a, on a surface in this case it's uh, uh, also it's more evident that is the mixing is not efficient it's going to be let's say only in the in the downside of this uh, this uh, uh, tube okay let's hide it for example also we can see the trajectories both for uh, the air and the exhaust and also we can animate them so for example here I'm animating the uh, the fluid fillets of the air in a, let's say in a time dependent way in, a, in an animation uh, in a time animation way also I can animate uh, the arrows of the exhaust gas uh, fillets in a more continuous way so I can see literally that is uh, swirling so it's m much more evident that uh, the mixing is not so efficient okay so what does it mean uh, in terms of uh, uh, for the designer it means that uh, in a matter of seconds I can just uh, check another configuration for example here I have uh, the first configuration of the tube that is uh, uh, reaching this point and the extended version so I, in, immediately I can check uh, the same the very same results uh, but uh, in terms of a different model so for example let's switch to let's say the again to the surface plot here let me switch to the mass fraction okay so we can see here the same uh, plot uh, of the other configuration but now we can ap appreciate more uh, a more efficient uh, mixing of the gas uh, of course again I can show the cut plot for example let's uh, use this for example so you can see here the um, the efficiency is uh, is enhanced of course I can uh, again see the, the fluid so in this way I can check that the second the second version is more efficient and again so the main point here is to uh, to have a tool to check the design but uh, let's move on uh, on the next example I would like to show you also uh, a thermal analysis uh, on a LED device I think maybe you can recognize this LED because uh, 
it's from a customer, it's a, a famous uh, producer of LEDs and it's our customer for flow simulation. In this case I have a more complex uh, setup. I will uh, slice it in half, okay. So you can see that uh, uh, first of all the domain is uh, open, it's no longer uh, inside the, let's say a cavity. I can of course uh, assign different materials for example. So uh, in this case uh, ABS, uh, uh, aluminium for the, um, the fins and of course uh, the material for the PCB where uh, the LEDs are uh, residing. Uh, of course we can define a special let's say two resistor component for the LEDs. Uh, this is uh, um, let's say um, it's uh, what is given to you from the, the market. In the market, in the electronic device market, uh, there is a specific uh, there are specific uh, measurements for the junction case uh, thermal resistance and junction board of electronic uh, uh, equipments, electronic cases. So in in uh, in this situation, you can just uh, uh, read uh, uh, the, the values from uh, the, the, the producer website. It's very simple to use. And of, and of course you can input the wattage, so the thermal power that is uh, produced by that element. So here I have all the uh, LED. Uh, I can also use uh, a thermal resistance, for, for example like a soldering paste or a, a thermal paste and so on. And here also I have uh, the goals uh, for the LED. So, of course, uh, what is meaningful for me is the maximum uh, temperature on that solid because, of course, I would like to check it uh, uh, versus uh, the, uh, let's say, the, the refinement, the, the, the defined uh, um, temperature of working. Okay, let's go for the results. Okay, so here, what we can see, again, cut plot, so for example here I can see the cut plot for the entire uh, domain, so it means uh, to, from fluid to the, to the material of course, so I can see the thermal, uh, the temperature inside also the, the, the materials, like in, here in the fin or here in the plastics and so on. And also I can see, because it's switched on, the gravity. So the gravity uh, here is producing what is called convection. So the uh, heated air is, uh, is going up, uh, up. Okay, of course we can see other results as well, like the surface plot. Uh, here I can see the surface plot, the temperature plot on, on directly on the surfaces of the fins, the aluminum fins. I would like also to use this uh, for a reference. Um, in this particular case, uh, if I am the designer, it's not trivial to get out uh, uh, the correct, uh, the, let's say, the, the optimized solution. What I mean? For example, here uh, I would like to identify which is the best uh, number, which is the correct number of fins. Uh, of course, uh, um, if I'm uh, uh, using uh, too less, too few of the fins, the air is not exchanging so much the, the, the temperature. Instead, if I'm using too much fins in the, in the simulation, uh, in, in, the, in the device, uh, the, the probably the air will not uh, uh, be able to go, to go inside uh, through the fins and to exchange uh, thermal temperature. So, what does it mean? It's not trivial. I can, of course, I can manually, for example, if I double click here, uh, sorry for that, okay, you can see here there is a para parameter, it's SOLIDWORKS parameter. It's the uh, number of fins that is uh, actually used, okay, because it, it's uh, linked to the model. But uh, what if I can do it uh, automatically? So, it's uh, called what if analysis. So in this case uh, I can just identify which is the parameter that I want to change. For example again 
the number of the fins of the simulation uh, inside the model. Uh, the current value is 100. The value that I have prescribed uh, are 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So there are five, uh, le let's call it uh, stupid uh, analysis, because in, in, in these terms, uh, the software has just to uh, use this number, rebuild the, the model, and do the analysis. Okay? It's not going to, let's say, put some intelligence. It's just uh, automatically uh, modifying the values and finding which are the results. So, I can uh, have, uh, in the end, of course, of this, uh, this run, and this is uh, um, this this takes um, about one hour and a half, I think. So there are five trials, five design points, and I can see the results for the LED for the main LEDs. Okay, and it's evident now from this table uh, which is the the correct values. So maybe the design point two or three are the better one. Also, I can identify what I like and create a project from this point. So, for example, I would like to show, show you another feature for uh, research and development. So, for example, I can compare those different uh, design points in terms of surface plot and goal plot. So, what is doing right now? is preparing uh, those kind of results for each uh, design point uh, and uh, also the goal plots, so the, the numeric values. And I will be presented with those, uh, uh, let's say it's a control panel, to see all those values, all those uh, uh, simulation at once to define which is the best. So this is a tool, automatic and uh, fantastic tool to take decision, design, design process decision. Okay, let's switch to the surface plot. Here you can see it's very intuitive. So again, like I said before, if you have uh, too less few, too few um, fins, you you are not so efficient in terms of uh, thermal exchange. If you have too much, you are exchanging. You are not exchanging so much the uh, with the air because of the reduced uh, um, thickness. Let's say the, the the reduced passage. So the best is in the middle. So design point two and design point three, and it's evident now. It's evident from the, the results. Those are those are in blues are less uh, uh, less heated. Also. I can check the uh, the history or the summary of the results in terms of uh, numerical values. So, for example, here I can also highlight the minimum and the maximum, and I can see for sure that design point two is the best. Also, I can view it like a chart, and also I can export it to Excel to communicate to my manager, to communicate to the client, and so on. And again, here is quite intuitive to see that the second design is the best. Okay, so again, this is a tool for designing and to understanding before building something which is the best design. Okay, let's switch uh, to another example. Also, uh, I would like to show you In here another example this is uh, more um, related to electronics cooling so to the module that I have uh, mentioned before uh, here again I have some uh, configurations because uh, for example I can uh, identify that maybe there are two, three, four main designs that I can, uh, can uh, uh, evaluate. Okay? For example, here I have internal fans of this device. There are some, of course, some uh, um, chips, uh, there are some uh, uh, thermal power uh, devices, uh, and so on. Uh, the second configuration here 
is the external funds. So I would like to, to, to see also if the external fund configuration is the, the same uh, or is more efficient or whatever. The third configuration I would like to compare is a different uh, uh, design for the, the heat sink. So in this case, again, it's just a matter of, uh, let's switch the internal fan. Okay, let's go to the results. And, uh, just a moment, okay. Here I can just uh, use this cut plot. So, also I can switch off the geometry. So, from here I have a, a plot. Also I can, again, like before, I can drag it and drop in, uh, in the position that I would like the most to see what's happening inside uh, in terms of temperature. But also, again, I can compare this. So, for example, let's say cut plot 1 uh, main chip temperature, memory temperature in uh, this configuration, this configuration, this configuration. Again, in, again, it's just a matter of comparing this kind of results. And for, um, from a, a setup point of view, it's just a matter of uh, cloning that setup with a new model. You don't have, uh, you don't need to redo it uh, from scratch. So it's very simple. Once you are done with the setup, you can just apply it to other configurations. And then you can have a batch processing to, to have all these kind of results in, in one table, like in this case. So again, here, like before in the, in the LED model, now I have the, the three situations and I can define which is the best. I can de define uh, uh, from which I want to go. For example, the external fan uh, seems better than the first one. But maybe the other heat sink uh, is also uh, nice. From uh, mm, just numerical point of view, again, I can see. Let's uh, highlight the minimum and maximum. You can see that the sec second uh, uh, configuration from main chip point of view, this one is the good, is the good one. From memory point of view, maybe the second or the third, depends. So maybe from this, this uh, analysis, I can mix up something from the second and third configuration. So you can see the value to have this like a, a, an R&D tool. Okay. Let's go also for uh, uh, the final uh, example I would like to show you. No, first of all, sorry. Uh, before the HVAC, I would like also to show you something about turbines. Let me just find the correct file. Okay. Because I was mentioning uh, the uh, rotating region, I would like to show you also how it's, uh, uh, it's used, how it, it's, it's easy to set up. So, for example, here I have uh, uh, an impeller. So, I have here the impeller, this is the casing, uh, and I would like to use the rotating mesh. So, let's start from scratch. I would like to use uh, uh, the wizard, so I can point out the, uh, the easiness of the interface, the friendliness of the interface. Here, you can just have a wizard that is guiding you. For example, deciding the uh, unit system. So, uh, here <clears throat> you can define the unit system or you can customize it. For example, I don't like the Pascal for the pressure. I would like the atmosphere or millimeter of water. So, it's up to you. Also, I can uh, change, for example, uh, the angular velocity. I would like to have RPMs or uh, uh, for example, in the main, uh, not uh, Kelvin, but Celsius. And this is uh, really easy to use because inside the software is uh, calculating only in uh, uh, international system. It doesn't mean uh, which, uh, which is the, the unit you are uh, selecting. 
So internally, it's already using the international system. So in this case, it's an internal analysis. Uh, I would like to use uh, time dependent and rotation. In this case, I would like to use the new uh, sliding mesh, the new rotating mesh. Okay, from a liquid point of view, you can see there are a lot of uh, different uh, predefined gas, liquids, uh, even uh, non-Newtonian fluids like uh, uh, the blood also, or um, rubbers and so on. Compressible liquids, real gases, steam and so on. Let's select the water. In case of the water also you can use, you can activate the cavitation feature. This is only for water. So for example in uh, naval impeller you can identify which is the problem with the cavitation or in uh, valve, water valve and so on. Okay, let's check uh, also the uh, starting conditions. It's okay. And now we have the domain. You can see it's already identified. It's automatically identified from SOLIDWORKS model. This is the SOLIDWORKS model. This is the casing, the impeller. And automatically the, the, so, the, um, the software is selecting the domain. Let's hide this domain. Also you can check which is the correct volume that is uh, uh, under... The, okay, sorry, I have to exclude Okay, so you can see also which is the, uh, this is the rotating region, so it's, it has to be disabled. Okay, so you can check immediately which is the fluid domain without doing anything, because basically it's also, uh, this, is, this passage is also automatic. Okay, let's set up the analysis. So for example, rotating region. The rotating region in this case it's a solid that is in, uh, comprising which is the, the rotating solids. So for example the impellers. So let's say to in this case uh, 2000 RPMs. Uh, no. Okay. Also we have to set up uh, the pressure at the inlet, okay, and the pressure, of course, at the outlet. Very simple. Okay, let's go for 200,000 pascals, okay. So also we can set up the goals. Um, I would like, I suggest uh, to always to use uh, uh, the maximum velocity to check it uh, for, uh, for uh, let's say, uh, critical, let's say for, for issues. Also, it's good to have uh, total pressure and volume flow rate at the inlet and the outlet. So here, and the uh, surface goal for this phase uh, in terms of total pressure and volume flow rate. Okay. So, the other thing that uh, we want to do is to set up the calculation time. So, in this case, uh, I have uh, set up uh, one second, for example. Um, I would like to switch to manual time step. So, let's switch to uh, 0 0.005 seconds. Also, I can use the automatic. So if uh, I'm not, I don't have experience, uh, I can uh, rely on the software. So also, I would like to save uh, every 0 0.05 seconds. Okay. Last step, I want to use the uh, global definition of the mesh. Let's say 0 0.05 for the minimum passages, but I would like also to have a local mesh, so I would like to increase the precision and mesh inside the rotating region. Again, it's just a matter of selecting the rotating region and identify which is the level of the refinement. You can also identify the refinement for the fluid cells, 
and for the um, partial cells, so fluid solid cells. Also, there are a lot of other uh, options. Uh, I don't have time now to uh, explain all of this. Okay, so this is the setup. And now I would like to show you the run. So, in terms... Uh, okay. I hope you can uh, hear me as well because, uh, of course, now the software will uh, use 100% uh, uh, of the, the computer. Okay, let's wait for the first uh, run that is the creation of the mesh. So, right now you are seeing the monitor. This is the solver monitor. That is the tool that let me um, uh, that enables me to see what's going on. Uh, in a minute, uh, I would like to pause it because uh, otherwise uh, you will not hear my voice very well. Just a moment, just to show you some iterations. Okay. Okay, so now I pause it. So, why uh, there is uh, such a tool? Because uh, you can imagine uh, in, in fluid dynamics, in the computation of fluid dynamics, uh, it's very normal to wait for uh, two, three, four hours and more. So, in, in, imagine that uh, you have waited, for example, three hours, and you have discovered at the end, only of the end of three hours, that something is wrong in your setup. So it's not good, it's a waste of time. So the meaning of this tool is to let you see what's going on, to let you check what is going on with the um, cut plots. You can check uh, goal plots. So again, this is very useful to have some goal to check uh, what is going on in terms of numerical precision. You can see the current value and the criterion for the precision. Also here you can see the mesh, if it's good or not. I can also have, uh, let's, uh, okay. So you can have a, a, a zoom on the mesh to see if uh, it's well defined or not. And you can see also how quick and how uh, good is the mesh. Because I have just selected the two things. The global mesh level and uh, the local mesh level, okay? Also here you can see isolines, for example. I can see also when the calculation is occurring. Let's switch back to contours or even velocity vectors, for example. So again, it's nice to see immediately what is going on. And of course you can see different uh, plots, different me measurements. So temperature, you can see the pressure, and so on. And you can see the rotating mesh that it literally is, is rotating. Okay, let's close it. So, now for the last thing, I would like to show you uh, an example in the case of uh, HVAC. Let me check this. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, this module. It's called HVAC, that stands for uh, Humidity Ventilation and Air Conditioning. So in this case, uh, I have uh, a, a model of an office with a person and I would like to uh, simulate the air conditioning, the solar radiation. But also, let's say, the focus here uh, will not only be the, uh, the temperature or the pressure or the velocity. Because in terms of HVAC, I have to uh, focus also on the comfortableness on the comfortable parameter, parameters from human point of view. So, 
Let's check with the software, for example, with no solar radiation. I can load the results here. Okay. So, for example, in terms of temperature, you can see outside there is, uh, it's, it's hot. Uh, inside there is the, the air conditioning, there is no exchange for this configuration. I will uh, uh, show in a moment uh, a more realistic uh, analysis. I can see the temperatures. Okay, also I can see what's going on from air point of view. Okay, so there is a recirculating system, there is air conditioning and so on. Okay, but it's not enough from a human point of view because uh, I want to see how much is uh, comfortable for this for this person in this office and this PPD this uh, sorry uh, this plot means percentage of people dissatisfied so it means that this is a, as a percentage for example we can probe here 22% uh, let's say statistically of course of the persons uh, can be dissatisfied of this situation here so they will be not not satisfied uh, sitting here in this case okay so this is very important for uh, those of you who are uh, uh, designing uh, air conditioning systems okay also i can see the predicted mean vote the predicted mean vote is zero if the person is feeling good, is more than zero if is if is feeling warm or hot, and is below zero if it feels cold, okay, or freezing. So let's switch to solar radiation. So one of the feature of this module is the ability let's see here, to address uh, solar radiation. Let me use the zoom. Okay. So in the radiation model, you can define the solar radiation and even you can define the, the location and the time frame. So for example, here in the simulation, we have set it up uh, in Boston at uh, 26th of June at, at noon. So it uh, automatically understands uh, how much uh, power, thermal power, will be in the simulation. Not only that, but we can address also the fact that uh, we have a glass here, so it's filtering the radiations. So, for example, from the quartz point of view, you can see here that uh, it's absorbing, absorptive uh, only for this kind of uh, uh, frequencies. For example, this is the frequency uh, related to um, ultraviolet. So it's very efficient, efficient uh, to filter out uh, uh, ultraviolet uh, rays, but it's, uh, it's letting in, inside uh, the infrared values, of course, infrared rays, of course. Okay. So the simulation can, uh, can understand this uh, particular setup and again let's load the results. And again I can see the temperature. Or for example, more interesting, the predicament mean vote. So here you can see the difference from uh, the other situation. Now it's more realistic outside it's very hot and uh, there is a barrier, there is a filter and I can see that uh, here near the, the, the desk the person uh, is feeling very good because the percentage of people dissatisfied, let's probe it again here, now it's 5%. So I can address it uh, inside the simulation to understand uh, which is the realistic situation uh, of the uh, office and if my uh, air conditioning system is uh, working good or not. Okay, so 
let's switch back to the PowerPoint to the final phase because I'm uh, also a little bit late uh, I would like also to show you briefly with a video what is the goal optimization this is an example for here uh, I would like to have uh, an inlet pressure of 12 bars I don't know uh, which is the outlet so I would like to understand which is the realistic outlet I only know the inlet flow rate how can I do this? I can use uh, for example manually to put an inlet flow rate of course uh, the, to put an outlet environment pressure and to modify manually all the values until I can get uh, the 12 bars but instead of doing manually I can do it uh, automatically so with the goal of optimization feature how is uh, it's working it's very simple it's like uh, we saw for the uh, what-if analysis but in this case uh, I have to define what is changing so for example of course the outlet uh, environment pressure but I have uh, uh, decided a goal. The goal is to have 12 bars in the inlet. And automatically, I will skip uh, to the video. Automatically, the software, now it's more intelligent because it's uh, defining itself, which is the design point. And so, uh, design point after design point is defining, it's uh, uh, designing a path to find out which is the optimum, uh, the optimum, uh, optimum uh, case. So you can see here, this is in time lapse. Uh, uh, this is to say it's taken 20 minutes, uh, if I remember correctly. So now finally, I can get after three design points, I can, I can get the uh, convergence of the solution. So I have the optimal values here. You can see the pressure at the inlet is almost uh, 12 bars and I have the final value for the outlet. So I can identify uh, with the, the optimization which is the best design. To finish my presentation, I would like to show you some, uh, some of the, the most uh, important case study we have for flow simulation. For example, Port Iraq in Germany. Uh, they are uh, uh, producing uh, uh, industrial PC, so it's uh, very important to them to understand the, the electronic uh, uh, cooling, of course. And uh, for example, they have uh, they, they have reduced the development time from three months to two two weeks. Why? Because basically they, they have reduced a lot of prototyping. So the same for IUSAFE, it's, uh, it's very famous in USA, they are producing this kind of case for uh, hard, uh, hard drives uh, and they are very tough. Uh, they are fireproof, they are waterproof, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's ni nice, uh, nice uh, uh, object. And again, you can see the benefits, they have cut uh, the time to market time by 75% it's huge and they have saved uh, more than fifty thousand dollars per design eliminating those prototypes uh, of course you can find the PDF on uh, our website also for example uh, Roitec radar in South Africa here we are talking about uh, simulation and flow simulation together so like I said before to uh, co-simulate something, in this case the radar system in the air, in the wind. And again here reda reduce time to completion by 50%, this is the time to market. Saved 30-60% in prototyping costs, it's huge, imagine also for, from a radar point of view. And also this is the, there is a PDF for this. Uh, Drager Medical, uh, this is in Austria I think, and they are producing these kind of uh, uh, life saving de devices uh, again here they have reduced the total number of prototypes from 8 to 2 
it's huge. Again, it's more than 50% of reduction in, in terms of prototypes. Uh, uh, Dornbert uh, Automobile in, in uh, Holland, in Netherlands. Or, uh, for example, Total Combustion Technology, again, in uh, Holland, I think. So, again, here, reduction in the prototyping phase by 80%. It's huge because they can see inside what's going on, in this case, for uh, air fuel mixing. Also, cl clear stream environment. This is a, a very huge company in the USA. They are producing this kind of uh, uh, water treatment uh, facilities. And you can imagine, uh, to prototype a water, uh, water uh, treatment uh, structure, uh, it's huge. So, it's, a, a, it's prohibitive to have some problems, to have some error here. In fact, they have increased sales for 100%. They have doubled the sales in the last seven years because of simulation because they are using simulation as quick as possible, as soon as possible. Also, Sigma design in uh, energy, so uh, we are talking about uh, wind turbines. Or uh, center lock, this, is, this was famous some uh, uh, years ago because of the problem with the Chilean miners. They were stuck in, uh, in, the, in that mine uh, for months. And uh, it's a special use of flow simulation because they have designed uh, in a very quick way a new uh, equipment uh, to reach the miners, to, to, save, to save the miners. And they have uh, reached the miners two months ahead of the projections. So in this case, it was really a life-saving uh, software. Um, NIME audio. audio. NIME audio means uh, electronic device, again, so electronic cooling. Also here, they have cut, cut out prototyping. And uh, for the final uh, uh, confrontation, I would like to remember you this Aberdeen report. Aberdeen uh, group is an independent group for uh, surveys. Uh, I will skip uh, this because uh, I'm late uh, on the schedule. So, the very first thing I would like to point out is the features that are very important to the designer. And the fir first of all, maybe it's, uh, uh, it's strange, but uh, the first uh, feature is the integration with the CAD. Of course, then uh, uh, it goes for accuracy and reliability. But also the fourth uh, uh, request is to have an uh, easy-to-use uh, uh, sim 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 software. And those are the results. The results uh, tell us that the companies in, uh, in Violet, that uh, they are using virtual simulation, are more successfully uh, meeting their targets in terms of companies that are using hand calculation or physical prototyping. So, simulate as soon as you can. Okay, for the final uh, uh, survey, I would like to know you, to know from you which is the level of the interest uh, for this webinar. And uh, um, this is very important for me to adjust and to create other webinars. So, I would like to, to know your uh, feedback also by email if you want to uh, address some specific markets or some specific features. So, it's very important to me to know your, your feedback. Okay, some seconds more. <clears throat> also, I would like to share these results with you. Okay, so, I have to thank you very much because uh, the feedback is very high, 77%, so very thank you. And I would like to, uh, to show you other webinars to, to prepare other webinars about simulation. Okay, let's uh, switch to the last survey. Of course, I would like to know if you want to be uh, contacted for more information about simulation, flow simulation, or other simulation software that you have, like also plastics and so on. Okay, other, some other seconds.
Okay, so I would like to thank you again also for this. Uh, a lot of you want, want to be contacted, so thank you again. Uh, okay, so let's switch to the final slide and the final uh, confrontation. Uh, those are my uh, references, um, the email, also you can find me on uh, YouTube. This recording will be available uh, in some days on, uh, on my YouTube channel. Now I will uh, read some uh, of the uh, questions. So, uh, does the flow simulation have the possibility to calculate phase change from water to steam? Uh, yes, um, we don't have, let's say, in general, uh, two-phase flow, but we have uh, only limited capability uh, exactly from uh, water and steam point of view. So it's possible uh, only if uh, we are talking about water and steam. It's not possible if we are talking uh, about other gases uh, and other liquids. Okay, so uh, in the simulation, uh, um, in the, in the domain we can only have one fluid or one liquid or a mix of the same phase of liquids li like we saw in the first example. Okay, so yes, it's possible from uh, water to steam, the phase change. Uh, other questions? I don't see other questions. Okay, so, uh, okay, for erosion for erosion simulation, could the change of the nitrogen be taken into account? Yes, basically, for the erosion, we have uh, um, a post-processor capability that is called uh, the, uh, let's say, particle analysis. So we can uh, um, see particles inside the simulation, but only at the end of a flow simulation. So it means that uh, the uh, particles cannot alter the flow. So if the particles are, let's say, in terms of 20% or less of the, the entire flow, we can analyze it and we can see also the erosion and the accretion. So the, uh, let's say, the, the packing of the particles inside uh, towards, let's say, a surface. Okay, so it's possible to see and uh, you can define if uh, the particles are of a solid, which is the diameter of this, that solid, if, if our, uh, let's say, for example, uh, dust particles or uh, wood particles and so on. Of course, the particles are statistically, let's say, analyzed. So they are not re real particles. But it's, uh, it's possible to, to use it in, uh, in flow simulation. Okay. No other questions, so uh, I would like to thank you again for your uh, attention, for your feedback. So let me have also other uh, feedback if you want by email. Uh, you have my reference here. Thanks again and uh, have a, a good day and a good evening. Bye-bye.